guys welcome back so in this lecture uh, we are going to move to the second step which is uh, related with some concrete examples so in the previous lecture we have seen like how we can understand a problem in order to solve it right so in this lecture we will try to uh, understand the problem by uh, relating it with some concrete examples okay so now let's move to this step okay and uh, let me quickly zoom it so that you guys can see it clearly okay so this one we have covered already so let's move to the uh, this point okay of the problem solving approach right now uh, let me go right to the bottom okay so how we can relate to an example okay so <clears throat> the first point you need to consider uh, you need to keep in mind is coming up with some examples can help you better understand the problem okay and how it will help you better understand the problem that I'll come in a minute when I'll show you the example, one example, right? So how you can uh, create a concrete examples, okay? And that really helps guys, uh, especially in interviews or generally in like whenever you are solving any problem, okay? So um, the second point you need to consider is, is as like uh, examples also provide sanity checks that your eventual solution works how it should, okay? So whenever you write the concrete examples that will help you verify like it is going to work how you want it to work, work right? How you expect your problem statement or your code which you have written, how it should work, right? So it, it helps you or make sure like it is going to work the way you want it, okay? Now, the uh, there are few examples which you can consider like if you're working in a service-based company, then you might have worked in the user stories, right? So in user stories, you might be aware of like how how user stories work, how like in there they clearly mention like what should be the input and what should be the output. Everything they literally write it in the user stories, right? And you just need to work on that, okay? And then the second example, if you are in a product based company, then you might have wrote test cases. So what happens in test cases like uh, you write a code to create a program, right? And then you write a mock code to test with some mock data whether the exact the original code is going to work the exact same way you want it to work or not okay so that is basically for testing of your original code <clears throat> okay so um, now let's uh, understand like how we can explore the concrete examples okay so uh, whenever you are trying to uh, uh, like explore some examples for a problem statement like just uh, just start with some simple examples okay and then progress to more complex examples and then once you are done with exploring the simple and more pro uh, like complex examples then start thinking about like what should be what will happen like if someone passes the empty inputs right so you should explore the examples with the empty inputs and then try to explore some examples with the invalid input so as so called like so as to solve the edge cases okay so it will <clears throat> help you understand like uh, whether your problem <clears throat> whether your problem is going to work or not whether uh, you are getting the expected input as you want from your uh, code to return what how like uh, your code will handle in case someone passes the empty input right and then what will happen with your code like if someone passes some invalid input okay so this way your edge case handling will also improve okay so these are small points but these impacts a lot okay now uh, let's understand whatever i just discussed with with a problem statement so let's say someone told you to write a function which takes a string okay and then returns counts of each character in the string it looks quite simple and quite straightforward, right? Now, let me write it with some concrete examples. Then you will understand like what's the value of whatever I have just discussed, right? So, let's say uh, I wrote a function whose name is like, uh, uh, what I can say, like count string cares. Okay, let's say I created a function. Uh, whose name is like count string cares. So what it will do it will basically count the characters of the string which we are going to pass in it Okay So we can pass some string like this one Like B B B B B B something. Okay, 
and then you have to write a concrete example like what it should return so let's say i've done all those stuffs which i have discussed in the uh, previous video like understanding a problem and all those stuffs which i have literally discussed in the previous video okay and after that i'm just uh, on the second point where i have to explore some concrete examples so let's say i decided to return an object okay which will count the character um, whatever we have passed in the string okay so let's say we are counting b b we have 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 times right so let's write b seven times okay now what uh, like here i got right now i got a question like do we just need to count the characters which we have passed in the string or like what about the characters which are not there in the string let's say a is not there in the string so do i need to pass like a 0 b 7 c 0 okay so like this we can ask okay this thing we can ask uh, we can basically check whether we can pass or not okay and then we can ask the interviewer or like we can search accordingly okay or if you are solving your problem by your own you can you can decide by your own okay <clears throat> now let's take another example let's say we have hello okay and then here we can let's say uh, your interviewer or you decided to like count the characters whichever you have just passed in the string then how it should be uh, like uh, counted right so here let's type hello first okay so now as you can see just give me a second let me frame it quickly yeah now how we can count the characters is like uh, we can h we have once e we have once l we have twice so we can remove this l and then o we have uh, once okay so this way by writing the concrete examples like you will understand like how your problem statement or your code is going to work right you will be sure like how it is going to work right so these are the simple ones these are the ones which i have just covered in the first point okay start with some simple examples so these are the simple examples now let's progress to some complex examples okay so these are the ones let me quickly mention it here okay now let's progress to this one okay now let's say uh, i've created this function i want to pass some co uh, complex examples so let's say i have passed this hello string right hello then how are you okay what's uh, let's type some my age is 12 it's just for example okay guys so here you can see uh, i started seeing the problem right so now i got a question whether i have to just count the characters which are there in the string okay or i have to count the empty spaces also which are there in the string and what about the special characters like this one and what about the numbers do i need to count everything whichever we have passed in the string or i just have to focus on the characters which are just passed in the string right so if you just count the characters then it will be something like h twice e i think once or twice you can you can count and you can write it right or in case like if you have to count everything then how it should be like empty space we have for example let's say four times and then a uh, question mark we have once and then these digits we have once two we have once and then let's say h we have once or it's twice okay so this way you can count everything whichever is passed in the string okay now a little bit trickier let's create another example so here <clears throat> let's make this first h capital okay or uppercase in our language right now what you have to how you have to count this h do you have to count this h and this h separately like capital h once and uh, lowercase h once or you have to uh, lowercase everything and then you have to count whether if it is a uppercase and lowercase h then you have to count it as two so how you have to count it okay 
so as you can see these doubts will make your solution clear right so these doubts will help you reach your to solve your problem statement more efficiently okay because by here you are doing you're just doing a sanity check how your problem statement or the code which you're going to write is gonna work okay so these are some more uh, some we can say more complex examples now let's proceed to the third point okay so in this point explore with some empty inputs so now uh, what if someone passed the empty input okay so this is our function we have created what if someone haven't passed anything then in that case what we should return do we need to return undefined do we need to return null do we need to return uh, or we have to throw error message or we simply have to skip whenever someone doesn't pass anything or simply don't act or skip right if someone uh, like uh, or we can say simply return or if someone doesn't pass anything like uh, we simply return out of a function without doing anything without doing any stuff okay so this way you can understand like uh, what should happen like if someone doesn't pass anything because those are users right we can't predict anything from them right about them so they can pass anything and they cannot pass anything right they are not like us like who are going to handle it accordingly right now let's move to the fourth point explore examples with some invalid inputs so this is also the one which is actually some sort of related with this one okay so now let's say someone have passed some invalid input okay let me show you an example quickly <coughs> yeah so let's say someone have passed instead of string someone have passed some number okay then what about that how we should handle it someone have passed some boolean value true or false okay then how your code should act okay it's a question here right so this way by writing down the concrete examples so, uh, you will get a better idea like how you are going to solve your problem right so that is why uh, like it is going to help uh, the beginners a lot if you are a seasoned developer then obviously you will just brush up your skills and um, it's it's going to be quite helpful for you also like in case you forgot like uh, in case you have done coding like way back in time and then it will you will simply revise it by seeing this video right but uh, the beginners for the beginners it's gonna help them a lot because it's gonna expand their thinking process right it's gonna help them thinking broadly in for a particular problem because as you can see how small this problem was looking right but when i start exploring it with the examples how many edge cases we got right so <clears throat> That is why I would recommend like uh, write some concrete examples of your problem. Even though it looks simple, it looks looks like you can solve it in like few seconds. It can have multiple scenarios, right? Like the way I showed you here. Okay. So yeah, this is it for this lecture. So see you in the next one.